You're watching TVC Breakfast. A coalition of over 200 civil society organizations has issued a 14-day ultimatum to the federal government to release Mr. Shore and other individuals being held without justification. They want to President Muhammad Buhari to show commitment to the rule of law or face mass action and civil disobedience. The CSOs issued the ultimatum in Abuja during a press conference on the state of the nation entitled Nigeria's Troubling State of Affairs. Well, joining us uh, via Skype is Executive Director Enough is Enough, Yemi Adamaleko. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Now, talk to us why a 14 day ultimatum? Why the ultimatum or why 14 days? Why 14 days ultimatum? Well, we thought 14 days was a good enough time to right the wrongs that we listed. But we thought it was also important that it wasn't open ended. Um, so it wasn't a demand that said we would like you to do it and then we'd all sit and watch it drag into to whenever. So we thought it was important to give it a, an, end, an end time. All right. Uh, in, a lot of people have been following this development and uh, they, are, they are asking how justifiable is this 14 days and by the time, or oh, justifiable, sorry, not justifiable. Now, the point there is, at the expiration of these 14 days, if he's not released, what happens? Not just about Yeli. So let's be very clear about that. So it's not framed around that. Um, as you've covered, if you listen to the five demands, the first one talks about President Buhari stating his commitment to the rule of law. I mean, yesterday was World Human Rights Day and human rights. And that's a very important one because... Um, part of the actions that have, have sort of triggered this ultimatum, all the agencies of government report to him, and the box stops at his table as president and commander-in-chief. So it's extremely important that as um, Nigeria's um, leader, he states publicly his commitment to the rule of law and the human rights of Nigerian citizens. Secondly, um, DSS has, as Punch newspapers, Premium Times, and Amnesty International have covered, there are people being illegally detained by DSS, um, we've asked those to be released. We've asked the government to to obey court orders, which is then tied to Yele's matter, because part of the challenge is that Yele's bail terms have not been obeyed by the DSS. And lastly, an investigation into what happened in court on Friday, which we have since seen that the DSS has apologized to Justice Ojuku, thus admitting that something did happen in court on Friday to those who are saying, including government spokesmen, um, Femi Adishina and Gabashu, who have implied that nothing happened. Femi Adishina said it's only 100,000 people making noise and not, nothing of this such happened. But in apologizing, the DSS has confirmed that something did happen on Friday that was against due process and against the protocol of both, not even the, the SSS and, and the courts of our nation. So ELA is the sort of the most symbolic one of the demands, but it's quite uh, broader than that. All right, now the, the House of Reps, uh, or let's say the National Assembly, has called for an investigation into what happened in court. And uh, we we'll wonder what's the level of engagement between the CSOs and, well, stakeholders in this matters will be within these 14 days. There'll be a lot. There'll be a lot of engagement with the arms of the National Assembly, even the National Human Rights Commission, who have also called for an investigation. So let's not be, let's, no, it's not a, it's not an us versus them game. All of us are after the same thing. Um, we were not, we're not members of the National Assembly, but as citizens, we made our stand that this is what we think should happen. The House of Representatives has, has joined in that call, which is absolutely fantastic. The Human Rights Commission, the office where we plan to um, uh, protest across the country after 14 days, have also joined in that stand, so that's fantastic. But ultimately, the person who can order um, DSS to sort of behave properly or according to his mandate is the president of the country. All right. Uh, walk us through, because be, uh, we understand that freeing Shore is just one out of some of the demands that the CSOs put forth. Can you walk us through some of the itemized uh, points that uh, you gave us ultimatum? Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll go again and, and say them again. So the first one, again, is that President Buhari should address the nation about his commitment to the rule of law and the human rights of Nigerian citizens. Again, yesterday was World Human Rights Day, so there's not a better time to review those issues as, as now. 
Secondly, in reports done by Amnesty International, Premium Times, and Punch newspapers, um, DSS is illegally detaining several citizens. We have an idea of numbers. Um, Mr. Fallon has said over 200. Joan Zabiri is probably the most recent famous one who was detained for two years until he was uh, recently released on, on bail. So we're asking the, the SSS um, to release everyone it's illegally detaining. Thirdly, court orders. There are several court orders, Dasuki, El Zazaki, Yelishuare, that the court has not, or that government agencies have not obeyed. And if our judiciary, the third arm of government, recognized arm of government, can issue orders that is not then obeyed, then there is a problem. And that is what um, Yeli's case falls under. After over 100 days, he was finally released on bail. But the SSS seems to take more joy in patting itself on the back that it obeyed the ultimatum. And then lastly, an investigation into what happened on Friday, because as all of us should not forget, Yeli was rearrested on Friday. It is now Wednesday morning, and there's still no charges to say why he's still being kept. From what happened in the, uh, in the Federal High Court on Friday, a lot of Nigerians, especially looking at uh, Human Rights Day that was uh, uh, commemorated just yes. about a day ago, uh, how do you, how, from your analysis, how does this impact on the human rights records of Nigeria? Well, uh, records for any country is not static. So at any point in time, which is why you have rankings that are yearly. Um, so one year you can be number one and another year you can be number 10. I'm not quite sure about rankings or what's, who's doing rankings and what, but what I'm, at least we were speaking to clearly was the state of the nation as of now. And we were saying that the actions of the state security services, the SSS, does not reflect the country that whose administration is said it's committed to the rule of law and the human rights of its citizens. And we're asking that to be shown. As people would wake up to read the Punch editorial this morning, it was quite scathing in its, um, in its not, uh, what's the word, um, condemnation, thank you, of the President Buhari administration, to the point that Punch is saying that they will start calling him um, Major General to reflect his title in the army and the way that he's behaving, um, not, not as a Democrat. So I think that's more important to me um, in terms of the real facts on ground and responses to, to what's happened. Now, there has been calls for investigation into this matter, which is one of the demands uh, by your groups. How would you expect uh, the investigation to go and what would you expect? Uh, what do you expect at the end of the investigations? Well, as with any investigation, you speak to witnesses and you speak to the stakeholders, the parties involved, speak to witnesses and you write a report and you release the report. I mean, I think in that terms of process, I'm not expecting anything um, complicated or let me say we are not expecting anything complicated. And I think the SSS apology to Justice Ujuku yesterday or you know, it wasn't yesterday, it was Monday evening, um, is a clear step that there is a recognition on the part of the SSS that something happened in the courtroom that was wrong. And then the point now is what went wrong? Who gave the instructions? And that's what the investigation hopefully would uncover. Who gave the orders? Who were the parties involved in terms of individuals? And then what is the process protocol when people breach um, process, breach, breach um, orders, or act in, in a manner that's counter to what they've been set up to do? And that's what we'll be looking to see, that the investigation is done and then there are consequences. Um, as a nation, impunity seems to be our middle name. Um, so it would be quite pointless to have an investigation, conclude that something happened, conclude that these A, B, and C were the people involved who acted wrongly, and then nothing happened. That would then not really be, would be kind of a wasted exercise, really, if nobody is forced, um, is no, if nobody is punished for their actions. And that's what we would like to see. All right, well, besides that, from the side of Nigerians, what would you like to see when it comes to Nigerians getting involved to condemn what uh, it is, it's, it's anti-human uh, rights, when, especially considering the ultimatum you have given to government? How, what kind of role would you like to see Nigerians contribute to all of that? What we want Nigerians to understand clearly is that this is not about an individual. It's not about um, Yelisho or neither is it about any of the others who we're, who we're saying are, are being illegally detained by the DSS or court orders that are not being obeyed. But it's about every Nigerian and the possibility that it could be you tomorrow. 
just two days ago, I believe, no, sometime last week, an APC um, member of the National Film Census Board was picked up by in Niger State, by the Niger State government, because he put a post on Facebook. And what was his post? He complained about bad roads and alleged that there was corruption in the Niger State government. I mean, two very simple statements. He got picked up for criticizing the governor, spent a night in jail, and then was released on bail and has a court date. Abba Jalingo in Calabar wrote a letter basically asking Governor Ben Ayade how he spent a certain sum of money, and that has got him in jail. And now he's being, he's being tried for treason. So uh, there was a student in Taraba that we read online. We've been trying to track down the student. So if you're listening, please reach out, who criticized the governor on, on Facebook and was expelled from Taraba State University. So <clears throat> these, are, these are incidences, these are patterns. We have a social media bill which has been pushed. We have an, a hate speech bill which is being pushed. So to all Nigerians, let us be very clear that it's not about a select few. It's something that could happen when your right to 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 comment on social issues, to criticize. I mean, we we have the right to freedom of speech. So I might criticize you. Doesn't mean you have to like it. But there is no. I've not committed an offense. Neither have I broken any law. However, if I have lied and have defamed your person or your institution, there are existing laws that allow you to sue me and take me to court for libel or defamation, not throw me in jail because your feelings were hurt by my comments. And I think oh, Nigeria is oh. very clear about that. Now, before, before we go off on that, the interesting point that we want Nigerians to understand is that the office of the citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is the highest office in this country. The president holds, holds the highest political office, but the citizens hold the highest office across board for the simple reason that the president and everybody in office that was elected were elected on our privilege, so to speak. We're basically telling them you're representing us. Therefore, we hold the power to hold them accountable. And that's the important bit that we want citizens to understand. All right. That's, that's, uh, that's really uh, spot on. Thank you very much, uh, Yemi Adamolekun. Thank you so much for talking to us right now.